Welcome to episode 56 of Amari Purple Talk, a podcast where I share my thoughts on the Prince musical singularity. I'm Richard Cole, your imagination funk soloist. Thank you for tuning in. Please leave your comments in the show notes where you listen, and please download on your favorite podcast platform. If you're listening on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And with that out of the way, we're going to start the show. But before we dive into our topics, uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, Of course, we have the upcoming Sign of the Times Twitter thread, uh, moderated by DJ UMB and Edgar Cruz. Uh, It will be sometime around October 10th, or maybe a little after, and depending on when all of us will receive our copy of the sign of the Times super deluxe so um please check out all the previous twitter threads uh from purple rain to 3121 um i will be a contributor uh with the sign of the times as i was with the 3121 thread so definitely be sure to check that out and thanks again fellas for inviting me also on october 10th There will be a virtual Sign of the Times Super Deluxe Celebration. Uh, This will be produced by Polished Solid Productions. Um, Check it out. Uh, I won't be participating in this one, um, as far as I know, um, but I am looking forward to checking it out. So keep that on your calendar. October 10th, a virtual Sign of the Times Super Deluxe Celebration. And last but not least... Uh, There is a series on YouTube uh, entitled Once Upon a Time in Minneapolis. Uh, This is, um, let me get the name correct, uh, put on by Cynic or Cynique 22. Um, I'm not sure how many parts it is. I think it's 15. Uh, I checked parts of the first episode out. Uh, It was recommended to me uh, by one of the listeners uh, Stephanie Mills, thanks for putting me on to that. I do have a link uh, to that particular YouTube channel. Uh, check the show notes. And if you haven't heard it, check it out. I'm looking forward to taking a deeper dive into it as well. It uh, looks like it's uh, kind of like a little makeshift documentary. Um, well done. Uh, uses a lot of archival audio and kind of tells a fluid story. Um, if you've seen something like, um, I can't remember the name of the Tupac, uh, documentary that came out, uh, about a little over 10 years ago, uh, drawing a blank on that name, but also like John Lennon, Imagine, uh, if you've seen that documentary from 1988, uh, does a brilliant job of utilizing a lot of audio footage or audio bites And kind of gives you the impression that that person is actually telling the story as if they're telling it to us now. So definitely check that out. And now we are going to dive into our topic. And that is titles early leak of the sign of the time super deluxe. And this will be my reaction or opinion on what's been leaked thus far. So I'm going to start off by saying that as far as I've personally researched, uh, there's no official announcement by title or the Prince estate. And you would think something of this magnitude, um, given that they didn't leak the entire set, uh, they leaked 
um, maybe about 80% of the songs from the actual album itself. And, of course, the advanced tracks of the vault material that they've released thus far. So, that being said, to leak portions of the album, you would think that there would have been some type of an announcement, either by title, like if you go on their homepage, it's not on their, you know, new releases, or anything that they want you to have attention to. And usually... Uh, Any new release, whether it's a legacy artist or new artist, they would have something on that homepage, you know, some kind of fanfare guiding you to check that out. And the Prince Estate, I mean, they've been brilliant on social media, uh, making us aware of different things, whether it's in regards to music or merchandise or significant events, but nothing with this release, right? So, with that being said, since there's no official announcement, and until I improved otherwise, it is my personal opinion that what has been leaked is probably fake. And the reason why I say that, and I'm not alone in this assessment, um, and this is in regards to the quality of the sound. Overall, the sound is really bad and that's on most of the songs um i mean i've you know skimmed through some of the tracks on title uh particularly housequake it if i was your girlfriend those they sound almost worse than the original cd practically um i mean there's subtle little nuances here and there that you can pick up in the mix that you don't normally hear in you know what the original cd or even maybe some of the original albums and you know there have been uh quite a few rumblings on social media uh actually quite a few people that i trust their opinion um you know they know about mixing and sound and you know i've got some experience in it myself But, you know, based on that assessment, you know, I kind of wanted to listen with my own ears. And, you know, I've gone through the track several times uh, with the way that I normally listen to title, which is just through my phone uh, with a set of earbuds. So, yeah, compared to everything that we've gotten from the Prince Estate thus far, this is very subpar quality in regards to the sound uh now i've also done a comparison now i don't have a great tv sound bar you know it's not anything top of the line or anything like that but you know it it performs its function so i decided to test it there and well folks again it's pretty bad now one surprise was that a door was at least significantly louder (laughs) than the other tracks. Um, That was the thing that really caught me off guard, too, was that, you know, usually, depending on what my volume is on the phone, you know, I might, like, ah, you know, maybe turn it down a little bit or, you know, to really get the full effect, you know, kind of crank it up. But, I mean, I had this thing cranked all the way to 11, (laughs) practically, and nothing. But and the same thing with, you know, testing it out on soundbar too. you know, nothing. But then, you know, I clicked on a door and, you know, there was some volume there. But again, nothing really significant about the mix itself. Um, It wasn't any different than how I've heard it before, whether it was cassette, CD, vinyl. You know, there was nothing outstanding. And I also did some comparisons with the 1999 Super Deluxe. And with those mixes, whether it's the original album itself or the vault material, there is definitely a wider depth and range uh, with the songs. And if not that, 
if I didn't notice a significant difference, you know, in the mix itself or the remastering on certain songs, there are at least certain nuances in the mix, you know, that I never heard before on other forms of physical media. Uh, particularly uh, what I compared it to um, things like Irresistible Bitch, the actual uh, B-side that was released, uh, DMSR, both the album version as well as the single edit version, and also with uh, one of the vault tracks, uh, Fill You Up. And every single one of those, like I said, again, it has that sort of depending on what it is, the wider depth. And to me, with wider depth, those songs fit that standard. Um, like I said, there's certain songs where I can't tell a significant difference between remaster and previous version other than maybe a better volume, but there are certain nuances in the mix, whether it's a, a background vocal that stands out more, uh, whether it's a keyboard or the bass line is more prominent or, you know, there's an extra guitar on the left that I didn't notice before on other forms of physical media. You know, those are the things that we look for when it comes to something being remastered. And again, I'm sorry, with this sign of the times set, I didn't get any of that. Also, in comparison, uh, I went and listened to uh, previous episodes as well as the current episode of the Prince podcast telling the story of Sign of the Times. And again, you know, this three part series or multi part series, I should say, it's only on episode three right now. But whenever they play a snippet of a track or if they're playing a track, and it's sort of the background to the narration of the podcast, you can tell a significant difference. And from the moment that this podcast dropped with its first episode, if that didn't amp up the excitement of this Sign of the Times Super Deluxe, I mean, much in the same way that they did successfully with the story of 1999, uh, with that series of podcasts. I mean, it just made us more amped, even though we've all pre-ordered it or, you know, we knew we were going to get it anyway. You know, just it's just like, say, you're going to go see, you know, Black Panther or Avengers Endgame or something like that, an event that you are going to definitely want to see. And the more trailers that come out, the more that it's marketed, if it's done right, amps your excitement. And this pocket, that's what it does. And again, like I said, the snippets that they've played, whether it was Sign of the Times, um, Housequake, If I Was Your Girl, those songs, the way that they sound in that podcast, you can tell the definite remastering of it. And again, um, I said it a few weeks ago, listening to those, even just the little bits that we've heard on that podcast, those parts automatically put me back into 1987. Again, you know, where the CD I've heard, you know, the original CD was based off of the same mix that they utilized for the cassette. But again, my personal experience long before I ever got that on CD was the cassette. And you had that, you know, depending on what type of boombox you played it on, you know, you got that range. And like I said, I, I feel the, you know, the drums of Sign of the Times, the drums of Housequake, the drums of It, the drums of Dorothy Parker, that, you know, that bass level, you know, just the way I heard it in 1987, I heard it and just even cleaner. That's the significant difference. It's it's cleaner. It's digital. It's, you know, again, hypes me for the album. And none of that is there for this title league. So 
again, my overall view, until proven otherwise, I believe that this is a fake pirate upload. Um, another shaky thing about it was the date. Um, it had like a date of April 18th of 2020. Now, just to kind of verify, um, if you check the release dates on all the other print stuff, the singles or the previous Super Deluxe, it's all the official dates of release. Uh, as well, you know, the copyright, it's, it is what it is, unless it's the original album itself. Uh, say, f let's take, for instance, the original CD that was uploaded onto Tidal. If they have the actual release date of it, then that official release date is going to be the official release date of when the album was released in 1982 versus the 2019 remaster of the original album, which would carry the copyright or the release date of 2019. The Super Deluxe Edition has the release date of when it was released in 2019. So this one carrying April 18th of 2020, that's pretty weird. You know, that's a weird one. It should have carried the date, which was, I believe, Friday or Saturday. Uh, Saturday's date, uh, which would have been the third. No, no, 12th. It would have been on the 12th. So, yeah, it's a lot of stuff that just isn't adding up to it. So, again, the release date is weird. Uh, the sound quality is weird. I know there's been a couple of people defending it as well. Title has its glitches. But to me, the actual tell is the fact that there has been no fanfare or announcement from either the Prince of State or Title. And that's just based on what I was able to look up. Now, again, if someone has additional information or can prove me otherwise, by all means do so. But I'm going to hold to the opinion that this is somebody with way too much free time on their hands and put up a ridiculous, stupid fake of the sign of the time super deluxe. And we're all running and clicking and whatever few pennies they think they're going to make off the, you know, off of the clicks or whatever. You know, that's that's pretty sad. But also remember that title does have quite a few. I call them like fake albums uh, that are on the sites like you click on an artist. And you have like mostly their original albums. And then there's some weird compilation or worst case, you know, there's some unimaginative, you know, group or artists that, you know, they have the same name. Like there's, you know, the time. If you go on the time, you'll see all of the time albums. And then there's these couple of other weird ones. They're the time. Or, you know, there's, um, I know there's two Jesse Johnsons. There's our Jesse Johnson of the time, you know, with his solo stuff. And then there's some cat that plays guitar or whatever. But, you know, that's kind of weird. But I think he's, that guy's pretty much legit. And I think he's changed his name slightly. So there's less, you know, you when you go on there, you'll see the diff. You, of course, you know the difference anyway. But. You know, I think that one's a little bit more legit, but the rest of it, it's just weird. Or, you know, you go to St. Paul Peterson and, you know, there's 20, 30 other St. Paul's, you know, that's not an actual Catholic church choir, you know, with a record out. So keep that in mind. And also remember a few years ago uh, when somebody dropped those fake Madhouse albums and those fake family albums. I know I was one. I drank the purple Kool-Aid, went on to Apple and purchased them all. Bought the three, Madhouse, I bought the family. Cause I'm thinking like, oh wow, they dropped this. And turns out we've been suckered. 
Now, Apple was cool. It's like if you had already purchased it, then it's yours to keep. They're not deleting it or whatever. So hopefully, you know, I mean, I still have those downloaded. So even if they disappear at some point, but of course, obviously, once they found out, they prevented other people from purchasing it because it was an obvious ripoff of that. So those things do tend to happen. This one, of course, it's a, again, a really ridiculous and elaborate ruse to, you know, sucker us Prince fans to get our, get our hopes up or even to sabotage, you know, the validity of the actual Super Deluxe. Because I believe what we've been hearing on the podcast is what we're actually going to get. And basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of lay back in the cut and I'm not even going to entertain these um, on title at all for now I'll wait till you know uh, September 25th when they upload it hopefully same day you know I'll get my copy of course some people have been saying that they've gotten that email from Amazon that they won't get theirs till the 29th I so far have not gotten that email but again, um, if I don't get it on time, but still what I normally do anyway, because it drops around midnight the day of release anyway. So I'm up with my headphones and, you know, on title, you know, just kind of getting a feel of it. And then when I get the CD, then I take that deeper dive then and really immerse myself in the listening experience. So that being said... Um, for now, if you are disappointed with that leak onto title and keep in mind, it has not leaked on any other streaming platform. I checked Apple, I've checked Spotify and it is not available there. Just what's been officially released thus far. So, and all of those have been officially announced by the estate. So. As far as uh, the Sign of the Times album itself, until we all get our physical copies in hand, the absolute best listening experience is still either going to be the original vinyl pressing, or if you still have a cassette of it, or the 2015 180 gram vinyl pressing then those are the best ways to listen to sign of the times the actual album portion of it so beyond that what do you think do you think that this is legit by title um or do you think it's a fake leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts and so we're going to wrap up this episode of Amari Purple Talk. But before we do, I'm going to close with a preview of the next episode. And basically what we're going to do is just take a break from all the sign of the times talk, unless there's something else that develops. But right now I'm planning on, or I'll include it, but we're going to kind of try to escape the sign of the times talk until we all get our copies in hand I will do a series of reaction videos um, detailing the original uh, album and then the vault tracks the live CD and then finally uh, the uh, video DVD so that will be separate from any future episodes of Amari Purple Talk uh, also, too, I've been wanting to do a lot of different things, and basically with my essentially non-essential essential gig there, it's been really sucking the time <laughs> out of, you know, before things were normal and were challenging enough, um, but now, you know, there's less of us. Um, but the work is harder now and I really feel it. So it's really been a challenge to sort of 
not necessarily with the show because I have a pretty good routine that allows me to prep for the show and things like that. But as far as projects that I started prior to doing the podcast, uh, projects that I want to do right away or in the future, it's been a challenge and just trying to figure out a way to make these things happen. So uh, with that being said, the show will go on in more ways than one. Uh, But again, getting back to a preview of next episode, uh, the topics will be focus on will we get Prince's last album in two years and also the First Avenue Benefit Show. Uh, basically, this is what I'm calling an its extended remix version of season one of Amari Purple Talks episode six. Um, so you can go back and listen to episode six if you like. But like I said, this will be the extended remix version. So it won't be a total rehash of that previous episode. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. And if there is something breaking about the sign of the time, super deluxe, if it warrants a topic, we'll include it at that time. If not, maybe a separate uh, video or something like that for YouTube. But until then, we're taking a break from sign of the times. Also, like I said, I want to do some different things. I want to do a, different types of YouTube specials. Uh, If you guys are comic book fans or comic book sweaties, comic book nerds, uh, in my case, there's a new word called blurred, black nerd uh, that's out. So I want to do something covering comic books. Uh, There'll be like little small YouTube things. Uh, Might drop one probably within the next couple of weeks. Uh, So look out for that. Uh, And plus, I want to do things covering, like I said, comic books, comic book films, plus some other forms of the funk. I wanted to do originally a second podcast uh, that was originally going to be called the Funk Soloist Hour. But again, you know, trying to find the time. And also, I want to do these things right and also not only improve the quality of this show, but give equal quality to any future projects as well but instead of doing a second show these will be sort of little one-off segments i kind of want to cover you know say artists like betty davis um also too uh, and actually i have to finish reading this book but uh alan Leeds' book on uh his experiences with james brown um want to finish that and i also want to do a segment on that as well so uh, those things just kind of look out for uh, probably within the next month or so. And outside of that, keep tuning in to Amari Purple Talk. And you can also find me on Twitter at Richard Cole underscore now on Instagram at Richard Cole underscore Amari. And also check out my website, Amari Communications. And that way you can keep up on all the latest projects and things that I'm up to. And hopefully you have a good time. So until then, keep it purple and on the one.